This podcast is brought to you by Thor Bullets. Thor Bullets are a premium full bore muzzleloader bullet designed specifically for modern inline rifles. Thor Bullets do not require plastic sabos or belts to be fired, meaning less cleaning for you between shots. The patented copper base creates an airtight seal, giving you greater distance and accuracy. Thor's unique engineering allows the bullets to retain 95% of their weight upon impact, and the controlled expansion ensures large, easy-to-follow blood trails. Thor bullets are currently available in a 50 caliber version that is sized to your specific bore. Thor is also expanding into a new 45 caliber bullet designed for faster 1 in 24 and 1 in 22 twist inline rifles. For more information on these great bullets, visit www.thorbullets.com. We'd like to thank Thor Bullets for their sponsorship of this podcast. Welcome back to the Muzzle Blast Podcast, the official podcast of the National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association. This week, we're talking with Montana Legislature member and representative Caleb Hinkle. Caleb has introduced just this past week a bill to introduce a separate muzzleloader season for hunters in Montana. Montana is currently one of the only states in the union that I know of that does not offer a separate muzzleloader season. So we're excited to have Caleb on and to talk about this bill and to talk about his passion for muzzleloading and and why he's bringing it. To to his constituents in Montana. So to to get started, how how did you get interested in muzzleloading? Do you have a long history of it or is it kind of a, something new for you? Um, I have a long, long history of it. So actually, um, I was in second grade when um, my dad uh, sat me down outside of cartoons and all that and had me watch the movie Gettysburg. Oh, back when it, and it just came out like it would have been a couple years old at that point. So, um, so I sat me down and that kind of sparked my love of history throughout my entire life and particularly for the time periods of muzzle loaders. And it started, of course, with the Civil War, um, and then expanded out to, um, all different realms of history, like, um, and then so, but my main focus has always been the time periods, colonial area trappers uh revolutionary war civil war mexican war that has been always my focus and um throughout my entire life and everything and it just was a passion from there and so eventually i got some muzzle loaders as a kid um, my first one was a 50 caliber flintlock kentucky rifle and that's the one i used for hunting um and um and so, you know, just kind of a thing that I just kind of did. And it was my, my sort of thing. My dad also had some muzzle loaders too. And then we also used our modern rifles, like seven millimeters and stuff like that as well. When it was kind of too cold and frosty out to use them. But, um, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I hunt with a Flintlock Kentucky rifle and that's, that's kind of how it sparked. Um, and then for me to carry this legislation was from there when I discovered that Montana was one of the only states that didn't have one. But I, I, in my research, I discovered we're the only state that does not have a separate muzzleloader season. Wow. So, yeah. I was talking with one of our podcast sponsor, Thor Bullets, just this week about Western hunting. And Montana came up because I'd seen the article about your bill. And they were just as surprised as I was that there was even a – there was – a state, let alone Montana, you know, kind of one of the big Western hunting states that didn't have its mm-hmm. own muzzleloader season. Yeah, well, you can use muzzleloaders during rifle seasons, right. and there's special hunts um, that pop up just varying on the time that the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Commission put in that you can use muzzleloaders. The thing that makes my uh, my bill unique is it's only for traditional muzzleloaders, so okay. only – um, percussion, flintlock, wheel lock, and match lock me- mechanisms. Um, no inline whatsoever, because inline you can use those during rifle season all you want. And um, and so this is just kind of a starter. Just I try to keep it as simplistic as possible because we have a pretty large archery season here, um, and I did not want to um, to essentially step on the archery season or the rifle season um, with this traditional muzzleloader heritage hunt. And so it, I essentially put it nine days after the rut here in Montana. Um, so it'd be um, two weeks after rifle season ends. And it's just nine days. We're going to try it out. I've gotten a lot of support from across the state. Um, surprisingly, this was just my fun bill I was bringing kind of just because oh, really? uh, I had interest in into it. 
And so, and so, yeah, a lot of support. And I discovered like half of our Montana state capital has hunted with muzzleloaders at least at one point in their lives. That's awesome. When talking to people about it. So, so what's it, what's it take to introduce a new season like this? You talk about trying to balance it with the archery and rifle. And I think, mm -hmm. especially here on the eastern side of the country, you know, the seasons aren't necessarily as long as what we see out west. And so there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of time to balance that. I know here in Indiana, we're in a similar position as what you're proposing, where the muzzleloader season itself is totally after all the other seasons. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So the main the main way that in Montana here is the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Commission. Um, people go to them and ask them to put this hunt into place. And that's how it works most of the time. People have been going to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks for years. Um, I've known personal people that have done it multiple times and tried to get a muzzleloader season and it just never really went anywhere. Hmm. The second way to do it is the rarer way, which I'm doing is through the legislature. But with that, you get kind of by backlash from some environmental groups uh, saying, why don't you go through the commission? You should go through the commission. Well, we have gone through the commission. And throughout this entire process, I've worked with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to get the language they want, the dates they want. And um, and so they're working with me. I'm working with them. It's going really well. The only backlash is just some environmental groups that um, – essentially just just want want the commission to have only the control of that and that is the case us the legislature can put in place a hunt it's just a lot more rarer to do it my way right hmm so how long does it take to you know prepare a bill like this and get it introduced and what's the expected timeline on a on a decision through the representation so so it's um it's fairly straightforward. You take your idea. Um, I'm just a freshman, so I've never written a bill before. And so you take your idea to the full-time bill drafting staff down at the Capitol. And our sessions only last 90 days up in here in Montana. And so it's kind of like go time at that time. Okay. And so you bring them their, the idea, um, roughly the wording they want. They go throughout the entire Montana code, as it's called, which is the Montana laws set in place by the legislature. Get it to work in there how you want it. And then you approve that draft. You pop it out um, and sign for it. And then pop in one is known as a hopper. It's just a box. And then from there, it will go to its first committee. And so with this one, the relevant committee was, of course, Fish and Game. And so it went to Fish and Game, oh, um, beginning of this last month. Got it out of there just fine. Um, and then we put it on the floor, got it. Th then it went to the House floor, got it through the House floor just fine. It's going to be in the Senate Fish and Game now on this next Tuesday the 9th at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Okay. And then from there, a senator, um, assuming I get it passed and everything out of that committee, a senator will carry it on the Senate floor. And then um, and then from there, it will go to the governor's desk. So it's a pretty – it's not necessarily – I think I, when I think of legislature, I think of Washington where things feel pretty slow. But you're – you know, We got to work quick. Yeah. Yep, yep, here in Montana because we only got 90 days tops. That's what we're budgeted for. Okay. I like the sound of that, man. <laughs> yeah, we had 70 bills on the House floor on Monday. We just got on to our transmittal break where it's a couple days we get off before um, the next half of the session happens. And so we just hopped on break um, as of yesterday. Okay. So as a representative, do you have uh, what's, I guess, the work-life balance like? Do you still have time to go hunt when hunting season comes around, or, or have you not experienced so that yet? Our, our, so our session um, begins after hunting season in Montana. So it usually goes from the beginning of January for 90 days. Um, and so roughly the beginning of May, end of April, it'll end. Okay. And so we don't have any hunting seasons during the spring here. Um and so our hunting seasons are essentially archery season begins in September and, and then rifle season begins, um, in, um, the end of October. Um, and then, so from there and everything, and then this new hunt would be roughly the middle of December and that'd be the latest it goes. Okay. Yeah. That'd line up just about perfectly with Indiana's season then. That's mm -hmm. neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I've, 
I followed your guy. I was just going to say, I followed you guys at page for a few years now. Um, and so I was, I was kind of happy. I saw that pop up on there. I'm glad you did. I was, I'll be honest. I was taken by surprise. I was, I was kind (laughs) of monitoring things and, and finding things online there. And I turned to my wife and I said, Holy crap, the guy who sponsored and wrote this bill is following the page. And I was just kind (laughs) of like, Whoa, it's a small world. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have a lot of good photos and stuff and that's why I, I follow it. So thank you. What are your main what game are you going after when you're when you're out hunting with your flintlock? So this will just be deer and elk. Okay. That that's it. And so um, that's pretty much the standard for Montana. There is antelope, but you're not gonna. It's gonna be a process to get an antelope with a muzzleloader. Yeah. I... Um. And so and so and then there is wolf hunting and stuff. And so I'm just keeping it to the basics. This is an experiment see how people like it. Okay. And, um, I've gotten a lot of support. I've gotten like, um, my former platoon sergeant in the army wants to get a muzzle loader now. Cause he hunts with open sights anyway, and was thinking about it. And so he was like, this is perfect. And so, and so he's going to try it out. Awesome. That's what we yeah. like to hear. How did you get involved in the legislature? Then you sounds like you're a veteran. You have some military background. And you sound fairly young, if you don't mind me saying that. Yep, yep. I'm 28. Um, I've been kind of working on and off in political jobs throughout um, my entire life since high school and stuff. I started with um, as an intern on our uh, current senator, but when he ran for Congress, Steve Daines' campaign. There I worked for some other political groups. Um and um, and then I worked for the GOP for uh, many, many years um, and many set election cycles. And I was on um, our current governor's congressional staff. He's our governor now, Greg Gianforte, but I worked for his congressional staff when um, he was um, in Congress. And um, and then so I just decided um, um, that I was going to essentially just kind of run my own campaign and so we did it. Um, my brother and I are both legislature legislators. I'm Caleb Hinkle, and he's Jedediah Hinkle. We have neighboring districts in the town of Belgrade, hmm. and so and so I'm up here serving with my brother. That's wonderful. Are you are you both on the same political party, or is there some? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. 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 And he was on Fish and Game. Okay. Um. Yeah. And so uh, that committee that I just passed it out of and stuff. And so he also hunts with a muzzleloader. He has a 50 caliber hawk and percussion okay. that he uses. Yeah, that's kind of the classic uh, Western fur trade era. You know, that's what everybody mm-hmm. thinks of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And his his thing is he's been reading recently. Um, oh, those Terry C. Johnson books. Oh, yeah. And so and so he's been going through all of those. So he's been getting super, super in depth with um, all the trapper history. Um, leading up to this. Mm-hmm. Well, that's neat that the both of you have an interest in the history and in the muzzleloaders, and now you're you're trying to open that up to more muzzleloaders out in Montana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like I said, an experiment. Yeah. Um, we're going to see how it goes, but it's been nothing but positivity um, uh, for this bill so far. Wonderful. Well, Caleb, thank you very much for taking some time to talk with me. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to share this with the listeners and with the other National Muzzleloading Rifle Association members out there. Yeah. And if you guys want to check out the Senate uh, Fish and Game hearing, like I said, it's on Tuesday. It will be at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you go to leg.mt.gov. There's a little watch and listen place right at the top there. And then you just go and find Senate Fishing Game and then um, you can watch it. Okay, cool. I've written that down and I'm going to make sure to tune in on Tuesday. That'll be exciting. I'll pop some popcorn and and get ready to listen. Okay, well, (laughs) thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for reaching out. Where can people find you if they're interested in following more of your work and, and things online? Um, well, my Facebook's probably my best one. It's, uh, Caleb Hinkle, Montana Legislature, that's C-A-L-E-B-H-I-N-K-L-E, and then Montana Legislature. Um, That's probably the best. I do have a site if you Google it. It's like Caleb for Montana. Um, Yeah. And so, but, um, so, but I don't really post much on there. It's mainly my Facebook. 
I'd like to thank Caleb again for taking time out of his day. He He's on a break right now, like he was talking about, and took some time out of his day to talk to us about his bill. I think it's exciting to see muzzleloaders in the news. I mean, it's not on broadcast television, but um, it was really neat connecting with Caleb online. Like I said there in the interview, I was just scrolling through and, you know, trying to catch up on the muzzleloading information online from the day and saw this bill being announced um, via the Flathead Valley muzzleloaders out there out in Montana and shared it. And then Caleb commented on it that he was the one that proposed the bill. So it's it's neat to see us all using you know modern technology to, to connect as muzzleloading enthusiasts. I think that's part of what makes this job a lot of fun. And, and it's just, it's not, it's not a whole lot of work, you know? So I, I really appreciate that out of Caleb really just kind of give me another, another thing to smile about at the end of the day. So thank you, Caleb, again, so much. If you're interested in following this bill, we'll have links to what Caleb was talking about, his Facebook page and website um, in the show notes down below or in the YouTube description. I'm going to be tuning in to the legislative broadcast that he was talking about with the fishing game. I'm not sure that it'll be, you know, super exciting, but it will be fun to at least see what, how all of this works and how a muzzleloading season can come to a state. Like Caleb said, it's experimental, but um, the reception has been real positive on making this happen for Montana. So it'll be neat to have Montana on the roster of having a muzzleloader only season out there. I'd like to thank you all so much again for listening to the show. It means a lot to see the numbers kind of tick up after we release each episode. A lot of the times these are in the works for a few weeks before they get released, and it's nice to see that everybody's listening and hopefully enjoying them. Uh, if you'd like to help us spread what we're doing here at Muzzle Blast, you can subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend. That helps us reach more muzzleloading enthusiasts out there who might enjoy the kind of stuff that we're talking about here today. 